Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to click a specific area of an element using Selenium WebDriver. You're watching Automate Now in a Marco Cruise. Let's dive in. And to begin, I would like to draw an element that we may come across. And it will look something like this. This is called a slider. We have a piece in the middle that moves around, depending on where we click on this element. Let's say we click over here, this piece will move to the right. If we click over here, it'll move to the left. We can also click and hold and drag this around, right, to change this location. So how do we tell Selenium to move this piece around? Let's say that we want to move it over here. How do we click over here uh, and tell Selenium to do that? And the same thing for this side. How, how do we tell Selenium we want to click over here on this element? Because this entire element contains a single locator, a, a unique ID, if you want to call it that way. So in order to answer that question, we need to take a look at how clicking works in Selenium. And it used to be that clicking would happen at the top left corner of the element. So in this case, it would happen over here in this area, right? Top left corner. And this is referred to as the zero comma zero location. You can think of this as an X and Y coordinate, right? X comma Y. The X obviously refers to the X axis which is moving from left to right. The Y refers to the Y axis that is moving up and down. So this is what it used to be like. But then around Selenium 3.2, that is when the development team began to experiment with what is called the W3C Actions API. Okay, so that's when they began development work on that. And then around 3.4 is when this became official with Selenium WebDriver. And what the W3C Actions API says is that clicking no longer happens over here at the top left corner of the element. It now happens at the center point of the element. So in this case, we have moved from this direct, from doing it here over to this location over here. So it would happen at the center point of the element. And this is important information to note because in order for us to move to a different area in the element or click different locations in that element, we have to know where we're starting from. So it used to be that we would start from this location, but now we're starting from the center point of the element. So let's just say that we want to click this area of the element. How do we do that? Okay, so first of all, we need to determine what is the width of the element. And there is a special method in Selenium WebDriver that we can use to find out the width of this element. So let's just say that this width right here it's going to start obviously from, from here to here. This is the width. And just for simplicity, let's just say that this is 100 pixels wide. Okay. So this is pixel 0 over here, and this is pixel 100. So we're going to get the width of the element, and then we're going to divide that number by 2. The reason that we're doing that is because we know that the clicking happens at the center point of the element. That's why we're dividing by 2. So in our case, we're going to say 100 divided by 2 is 50, right? So this 50 represents the location where the click happens. So right over here, that's the 50 point map. So that would be pixel number 50. So what does this tell us? It means that if we start from the center point of this element, we can move 50 pixels to the right from that point. We can also move 50 pixels to the left. So if you want to move to the right, we need to pass a positive value to the x-axis. If we want to move to the left, we pass a negative value to the x-axis. So I'm just going to put a plus sign here and a negative sign over here. So we can move up to 50 pixels to the right, because if we go past 50, then we go outside of the element. So let's say that we want to go 25 pixels from the center. Okay. So in, in this case, we can say something like this. We can say 25 and then on the y-axis, we're going to say 0. And recall that the y represents the up and down movement. In our case, I just want to leave it in the middle of the element, so I'm, I'm not moving it up or down. I'm just moving it from side to side at this moment. So by using this 25, 0, I'm saying, starting from the center, I want to move 25 pixels over to the right. So in this case, it's going to land somewhere in the middle over here. That's where my click is going to occur. Let's go take a look at a coding example. And let's begin by taking a look at the AutomateNow.io website. And we're going to navigate to the sandbox page over here on the top right. 
And here we have different categories. I'm going to click on this one that says slider. When this page loads, we see this slider right here. And the default value is 10. If I move this around, you're going to see that value keeps changing. So I can drag and drop around like that, or I can click different areas of this element to make the slider move to that location. So before I show you the scenario of how to click to the right of the center, let me show you what happens when we do a simple click on this element. So if I refresh this page, I'm going to hit F5, we see that the slider is over here on this side. We're going to perform a simple click operation on this element to see where this slider lands. And we should expect it to land in the middle because we said that clicking occurs at the center of the element if you're using the latest version of Selenium WebDriver. Let's take a look at that example. And first, let me find a locator for this element. And we can use this ID right here. So let's copy this and go to the code. And here we're going to create a web element. Now that we have the web element located, we're going to do a simple click operation. I'm going to say slider, slider dot click. Let me go ahead and run this test and put a breakpoint right here. The test is running now. Let's go back to the website. And this is what the page looks like before we do the click operation. Now let's go ahead and do the click. Here I'm going to click this button to step over this line. And now I'll go back to the website. And notice that now this is at the center of this web element. The slider has moved to the center. We can also verify this by looking at the value of 50. So this is how we're able to verify that when we click on an element, the click occurs at the center point of the element. Now let's go ahead and do the example where we want to click to the right of the center, so somewhere in this direction. And for that, let's go ahead and inspect this element one more time. I'm going to click on this button right here and then move my mouse over to the element. And as you can see, there's a pop-up that comes up. And on the top right hand corner, we can see a number, 750 by 34. 750 refers to the width of this element, and 34 refers to the height in pixels for this element. We don't care so much about the height of this element. We are concerned with the width. So in this case, 750. This means the total width of the element. And recall that we need to divide this number by 2. That means that when we divide this number by 2, we get 375 as the value. And that 375 occurs at the very center of this element. So we have 375 pixels from this center over to this edge. And another 375 pixels from the center of this element over to the right edge. We want to click somewhere in this direction over here. So if you want to click in this area over here, we can choose any number between 0 and 375. Let's go ahead and go with 250. So we're going to start from the center and we're going to move over 350 pixels to the right and we're going to land somewhere in this direction. Let's go to the code. So now we're going to use the Actions API that we talked about. And then we're going to say actions dot move to element. This is the method that allows us to click by a given offset. And here we're going to pass the target element. In our case, it's the slider element. Then we need an X coordinate. So how far do we want to move from the center of the element? Remember that if we use a positive value for the X coordinate, we're moving to the right, starting from the center. So in our case, we want to use 250 pixels. And then for the Y coordinate, we do not want to move up or down. So we're just going to use zero. And then we need to call dot click dot build dot perform. Let's go ahead and run this test. And this is what the page looks like before we perform that click. Notice that it's still at the center because we're using this over here, this click method. Now we're going to do this one, clicking by offset. So from the center, we're going to click 250 pixels to the right. Let's go ahead and execute that. Let's go back to the website. And now we can see that the slider has moved over to the right side, as we expected. Now there's another way that we can accomplish this. Let me show you that. Remember that I said that we can get the width of the element. So there's a special method for that. We're going to create an integer here and call it width. And here we're going to say slider dot get size. And then we say dot get width. Notice that we can also get the height of the element. 
and this is going to return the width of the element. In this case, it's going to be 750. And then we're going to say actions dot move to element. We're going to pass in the slider element. And in this case, for the x coordinate, we're going to say in parentheses width divided by 2 minus 100. And then for the y, we're going to say 0. Let me go ahead and comment this out right here. And let's discuss what is happening right here. So first, we're getting the width of the element. And this will say 750. Then we're taking that width, we divide it by 2, which gives us 375. Then 375 minus 100 is 275. So this is the equivalent of moving 275 pixels from the center of the element. And this type of technique can be very useful, especially when you're trying to click the very edge of the element, or close to the edge of the element. Let's see how this works. And this is before, and this is after. So we were able to perform a similar operation using the width of the element. And now that you know how to move to the right, what do you think we need to do in order to move to the left? So let's just say we want to click somewhere over here. And that would be quite simple because all we need to do is to use this number again, but instead of a positive integer, we would use a negative integer. It would say negative 25 comma zero. And this would allow us to move from the starting point in the opposite direction, right? We're going left this time, 25 pixels over, and the click would occur around this location right here. Let's take a look at a coding example for that. In that case, let me go ahead and comment this out. And I'm going to reuse this line of code right here. And here I'm going to say, instead of using a positive integer right here for the x coordinate, we're going to use a negative integer. I'm going to put a negative right there. And this is going to cause the slider to move to this general direction over here. Let's go ahead and run this test. This is what it looks like before. And this is after. As you can see, it moved from the center over to the left. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.